Hi guys, welcome back aboard good old Athena for yet more DIY fun. This week we're going to make it a lot easier for us to anchor. For one, we're going to be hooking up the windlass to 24 volts. Up until now it's been 100% manual. We're going to do that using this spiffy wireless remote with a built-in chain counter. We're also going to be figuring out a better way of securing the anchor rather than just lashing it down. And also I'm going to be making a bridle. In addition to our anchoring related activities, we're also going to be making canvas covers for our jerry cans and I'm going to attempt to make some kind of sun shady thingy for the cockpit so we can get out of the sun during the summer. My name is Mess, this is my wife Ava. I've spent the last five years on a somewhat extensive refit of our 1987 Warrior 38 named Athena. That was a DIY fun packed adventure complete with a very extensive osmosis treatment, building a new rudder using vacuum infusion, rebuilding the entire deck, gutting and subsequently rebuilding most of the interior, painting the top sides and a ton of other projects. The summer of 2021 we started cruising full time. Now we're finally ready to begin our adventure. I installed our windlass before we left Denmark, but I didn't have time to finish the wiring. So like I mentioned up until now, it's been 100% manual. So getting this all hooked up is going to be a big improvement. One of the downsides to the Low France Tigris or Tigris, however you want to pronounce it, windlasses that we've got is the fact that it does not have a built in sensor for a chain counter. So if we want the display on the little wireless remote here to work, we have to add an additional kit. There's two different kits available. I believe they work in the same way. It's just a Hall effect sensor and a magnet. The difference is how the sensor part is mounted. So for this kit, it's supposed to be mounted in this plastic straw to the deck. I actively despise this solution. This is going to mean more holes in your deck. And plus, this is super flimsy and it's just likely to snap the first time anybody kicks it. The other version of the kit has a little metal brackety thingy with a hole in it that gets mounted to the windlass. And and then the sensor sits inside of that hole. I think that is a much, much better solution. What would be even better is if this chain counter sensor was already built into the windlass. You see that on plenty more modern windlass designs, but not on the Tigris or Tigris. So yeah, here we're gonna have to mount the sensor, which is gonna be a little bit fiddly because this goes up and down. We're gonna have to adhere that in place. And then we're also gonna have to drill a small hole in the gypsy and embed a magnet in there that this guy can send so yeah, this is going to be a little bit of a hacky situation. I've already put a little mark on the gypsy just to guide me to where I need to drill the hole. Now let's see if we have a drill of a suitable size. The magnet comes with this little plastic doodad and I believe the magnet goes inside of there and then this is what gets shoved into the gypsy and this is seven millimeters. I believe the manual called for a 6.5 millimeter drill, which I've got right here. I think that may be too tight, but uh, let's give it a go. We can always transform it into a seven millimeter hole if we need to. After having carefully drilled the hole in the gypsy and checked the depth, I hammered in the little magnet part. Then I adhered the sensor part into the mount that's attached to the windlass. Now that is all done with a bit of Sigaflex that'll need to cure for a few days. So let's move on to our next project our canvas project. We have a couple canvas projects that we want to work on over the next couple weeks, but one that I am dying to get started is making covers for our jerry cans. Lucky for me, today is that day. We have five jerry cans and we just finished our spiffy little bar to lash them to up on deck and now they are begging for new covers. The covers serve two purposes. The first is to protect the jerry cans from UV damage or just general everyday wear and tear. And the second is, well, so they look nice. I tried to find a template or a tutorial online for the covers that we wanted, but I couldn't find anything. So in true satellite fashion, I'm going to be making my own template. I'm going to use this tarp as my template material. It is see-through and it doesn't stretch, so it seems like it's going to be really good to use to make a template. This one we fold because here on Sal Life, we always need templating material. And then we just store it in the mad station. And somehow I'm the messy one. We're in no way to be regarded as canvas work experts. It's more fitting to describe us as complete and utter noobs. After a bit of head scratching and considering different options, we came up with what will be our first attempt. 
This is our rough template. What we're going to do now is make one out of canvas. We're going to sew it together and then take a look at it and see if we want to make any tweaks. We ordered a big box of various sewing related items. Here is the canvas we'll be using. It is not Sumbrella, which I've read on the internet is very popular for stuff like this. It is something that's maybe comparable, but it is a lot cheaper. This stuff is sold specifically for marine use, so I'm pretty sure it's not horrible. I don't know how it is compared to Sombrella, but I do know that it's a lot cheaper than Sombrella, which makes a lot of sense for us because we're complete noobs when it comes to canvas work, so it makes sense to start with a cheaper fabric or material. This PVC mesh stuff here is what I'm going to use to attempt to make some kind of shade thing for the cockpit in, but uh, we'll get back to this later. Then we just have a bit of thread in here, some reinforcements for the mesh project, nylon webbing, more reinforcement. Yeah, nothing too interesting. Yesterday we went for an exciting stroll around Sherberg to find these soapstony chalk, whatever they're called, marker thingies for dark fabric. Let's uh, bust out our template and uh, get this party started. Ta-da! The first prototype. This has taught us a few things. For one, we need to adjust the tensioning slightly on the sail right. And also we want to put in some kind of opening up here so you can get access to the handle. To reinforce the opening for the handle, we've ordered some more of this PVC stuff and that should show up tomorrow. So let's pause this project for a little bit. We took advantage of the nice weather and used yet more of our see-through type templating material to make the template for the sunshade in the cockpit. We cut out the template and transferred the shape onto the PVC mesh. We may need to do some more trimming, but this should get us reasonably close. This is the sunshade, which looks ginormous once you have it inside of the boat. But my plan is to reinforce the edges with this PVC tape and then the corners with these triangular shaped PVC pieces. I'm very curious to see how this is going to work out. But if we mess up this prototype here, it'll only have cost us about 30 euros in material. So it's definitely not a big deal. And considering what we were quoted to make one of these, I think it is easily worth it. The sunshady cover thingy is coming along nicely, but I did mess up a little bit. This hole for the backstay needs to be a little bit further over. I can do that using some of the reinforcement material that we're also going to be using on the jerry can covers. But the package with that stuff seems to be stuck a little south of Paris. Rather than just sitting around twiddling our thumbs waiting for this package to show up, why don't we pivot and get started wiring up the windlass. I already have 35 square millimeter cable run all the way from the windlass and well, almost all the way to the battery. Now 35 square millimeters might not sound like a lot, but it is only a 1500 watt motor and the total run here is about 18 meters, which gives us a voltage drop of around 3%, which is acceptable. This is the solenoid or control box that is going to allow us to control the 1500 watt motor with switches that are not rated at 1500 watts. Now in our case, like I showed you earlier, we're going to be using this wireless remote. 
But we'll also have this not so wireless remote, just as a backup in case we drop this overboard. Having two ways of controlling the windlass may seem like overkill, but like I said, we could easily drop this guy overboard. We could also just forget to charge him, which would render him useless. So having a second way of controlling the windlass seems like a good idea. I could have gone for the classic foot pedals up by the windlass, but having this remote with the plug inside of the boat and just running this out through a hatch will mean fewer holes in the deck. And remember, this is just a backup solution. Besides the solenoid or control box and the remotes, we also need a circuit breaker. The manual calls for a 70 amp circuit breaker and Low Friends sells this little guy, which they claim is the bee's knees. As you can see, he is designed to be mounted through something, for instance, some plywood. Pardon the mess here in the aft cabin. This is kind of like our garage, but the, somewhere in this general area is where I'd like to mount this guy. But I want to make sure that I've got easy access to him. And that does pose a little bit of a challenge in our case. Or that's to say, I don't know if it'll pose a challenge. It might, because I want this guy to be as close as possible to the battery. And if I can't get it really close to the battery, I may end up doing something that it's technically okay, it's not as neat or as clean of a solution, but I may add a second fuse. This is not something though friends manual mentions, but the problem here is that the cable that goes from the positive terminal to the circuit breaker is not protected by the circuit breaker. So if we have a short here between the negative and this cable before the circuit breaker, well, there's nothing there to protect the cables. Fingers crossed that I can put this circuit breaker right next to the battery just to have the cleanest setup. But if I can't mount this guy somewhere close to the battery where he's also gonna be easily accessible, well, then I could add a second fuse like for instance this 125 amp fuse. Like I said, adding this second fuse is not really a nice and clean solution. It's double fusing it, which is just kind of eh, but at least the cable would be protected. But fingers crossed we won't need this guy. The control box or solenoid came with this neat little wiring diagram. As you can see, it's got the foot switches on here, which we won't need. But then the manual for the wireless remote came with this wiring diagram, which describes how to hook up this little box, which is the receiver for the wireless remote. And this diagram also shows how to hook up extra switches as a backup to the wireless remote. While we're on the topic of this little receiver box here, there is a somewhat annoying design flaw. There is no way of mounting this to anything. Some flanges with some holes in would have solved that, but yeah, there is, as you can see, no way of mounting this. I figured it was easier to do the first bit of wiring for the receiver for the wireless remote here in the kitchen island. And uh, well, it looks a little bit messy now, but this should do the trick. Let's go ahead and get this put in the forward cabin. The control box or solenoid is gonna have to go down there, but I'd like to put the receiver for the wireless remote in there. Progress has been made both in the forward cabin and also here in the aft cabin. Everything still looks a little bit messy. That's just because I'm holding off on doing the last bit of cable management until I've seen everything work. That turned out to be a good decision because when I ran the windlass for the first time, the circuit breaker, which I ended up installing here under the nav station, immediately tripped. To help narrow down the issue, I disconnected the cables from the control box or solenoid box going to the windlass. After that, the breaker no longer tripped, so I knew it was an issue from here going forward. I was 99% sure it wasn't an issue with the cables, so I went up on deck and removed the motor cover, and there I saw the issue. There's not a lot of room in there, in fact it's so tight that the cover had chafed through the heat shrink on the cable lugs. I solved the issue by flipping the cable lugs upside down, giving myself just a few more millimeters of clearance, but there's no need for it to be that tight in there. I wish Low Friends would come out with a new version of this winch with just a little bit more room inside of the motor cover and with an integrated chain counter, but yeah, I think everything is working the way it's supposed to now. Here are both of our remotes. The wired one is instantaneous and as you can hear, both buttons work. The wireless remote, well, it takes a few seconds for it to boot up. As you can see, I've just hit the power button there. There's a nice logo up here. I don't know if this 
delay in starting up is going to be annoying, but uh, now it's ready and both buttons work. As you can see, or maybe here, there is a little bit of a lag from when you hit the button to the thing actually starting. So yeah, we'll see if that's annoying, but yeah, the chain counter works. For the chain counter to be accurate, we need to tell the remote the circumference of the gypsy. Now, Lofrance has provided this little chart here where you can see, based on your chain and what kind of gypsy you've got, what is the circumference. It's worth noting that the default setting is 33 centimeters, which none of these are. So no matter which gypsy or chain you've got, you gotta go in and change this. The closest we're gonna get is gonna be the 33.6, which is what we've got. So I've made that modification. Now let's test the chain counter. For this little test of accuracy, I'm just gonna place the anchor here on the pontoon and let out a little bit of chain. I've marked the chain here. Now we'll put out chain until the chain counter says we have, let's say five meters out, and then we'll check to see if that is accurate. I put out exactly five meters on the chain counter and I've just measured and there are five meters of chain here. Perfect. On a quick side note, before we get a bunch of comments saying that we shouldn't solely rely on the electronic chain counter, we are also going to be marking the chain physically with these little plastic doohickeys. But the local chandler here only had this small bag of yellow ones and we needed a bunch more to do that. So I've ordered those and uh, they should get here next week. Besides marking the chain, there's only one other item on the to-do list before we're ready to do some anchoring, and that is to make a bridle or snubber. The bridle will prevent shock loading and will also take the load when anchoring and transfer it off of the windlass and put it onto our cleats where it's much better to have it. And we're going to be making it out of this stuff. This fancy looking rope is what's known as eight strand. It's got eight of these little strands in here. You could also use regular three strand for the bridle, but using eight strand makes the construction of it just a little bit easier. I'm gonna put this thimble in the middle of the bridle and that is where the eight strand construction is gonna make life a little bit easier for us. We're also gonna be adding some of this anti-chafe stuff here. I ordered this anti-chafing stuff, which is called Chafe Pro from Blue Marine Store. And they actually sent along a little handwritten note to say thank you for all of the videos and also a little gift which was uh, this really cool flashlight. Thank you so much to bluemarinestore.com. That was very kind of you guys. I'll include a link down in the description. Because this stuff is eight strand, to secure the thimble in the middle, we can do a simple Brummel splice. Here is the center of our line. So now we just pop in this guy to figure out the size, which would put us well, somewhere right around here. And we simply just open up a hole here and pass the line through that hole. As you can see, we've got a nice loop here now with one end of the line passing through the other. To lock this, we open up a hole on this side and pass the line through it and it'll be locked in place. And there we go, a thimble securely locked in place. At the end of each of the two legs in the bridle, I want to put in a couple of eye splices to make it easier to get this onto the cleats. But before I put in those eye splices, I have to get the Chafe Pro on there. Well, it seems like I've gone, done, and fudged up. I've ordered the Chafe Pro one size too small, so it won't really fit on this line. Ah, stupid mistake. Despite my little uh, <clears throat> mistake of ordering the wrong size anti-chafe, I decided to go ahead and finish the bridle. This will certainly be good enough to get us through the summer in Ireland, and that's what I'm most concerned about right now. 
I'll refer to this bridle as our Mark 1 bridle because there are already a couple of things I'd like to change. For instance, I want to get that anti-chafe on there. And also for the next one, I think I want to make these eye splices a little bit smaller. These fit over our cleats, but they could be just a little bit smaller, I think. We're out of video shooting time for this week, but on Ava's recent excursion to the grocery store, she did find something that can help us mount that little receiver for the wireless control for the windlass, and that is some double-sided tape. I really wish Low France would come up with a better way of mounting that little receiver, but yeah. We'll use double-sided tape. Unfortunately, the canvas we ordered to finish the jerry cans has not arrived yet. It looks like it's going to be coming in Monday, so hopefully we yep. can get that job done next week. Yep, and on that hopeful note, we'll end this week's video here. Mm -hmm. As always, feel free to leave a comment down below, and don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like. See, See you! you.